Welcome everybody, Ralph Havens here, autoimmuneanswers.com. And I was just outside, but it's about nine degrees Fahrenheit today, really cold. And um, so I thought I'll just come back in and, and show you guys the view from one of our windows. Um, the Department of Natural Resources land out there. And it bumps right up against the Snoqualmie, Mount Baker National Forest and trails that just go everywhere. But it's really cold, um, really icy. And you know, years ago I used to um, live in San Diego, no snow and ice there, and I walked seven minutes to work. It was really cool. And, um, but sometimes you know, you're walking to work and you're just like, oh God, gotta go to work. And um, it was my own office, beautiful place, Mission Hills, and um, in San Diego. And every so often I would, you know, pass some guys, um, at the Starbucks, they were having, you know, their their coffee. Some older dudes that obviously looked retired and just hanging out, having a good time. I thought, ah, oh, that looks so good, just hang out and stuff. And then I thought, you know, there's going to come a time that I'm not walking to work, this seven minute walk to work, and doing doing this. So I should enjoy it right now, you know. And um, and yesterday I had an experience that was um, that kept me thinking. It's interesting how it didn't really fire me up, but it um. But I did keep thinking about it, especially coming back last night. The roads were really, really icy. And, and um, the Mount Baker Highway, you know, when we were in San Diego, there was a guy that sold us our salmon. He used to live up here. And he, um, he fished way up in Alaska and, and used to um, live in Bellingham area. And he, um, he said he had lost a lot of friends at, along the Mount Baker Highway. And um, we've had people that we know that... Um, had accidents on that highway and are no longer with us. And you see little crosses along the, the highway uh, as you head into town. And so um, there's even a car that's just still wrecked, a BMW that um, I know the guy that, um, that passed away that that car hit. I think it's been a couple of years now, but that car is still crumpled up and sitting in somebody's yard area as you drive into town. and. Um, and so there I was, you know, I was taking it pretty mellow. It was really icy. The whole road was pure ice. And I rounded the S curves and, um, and I was on a straight bit of land. And I thought, oh, I'm going to just look over and see how, um, if my friends have a big smoke fire going in their, their house, they have live in a round house. It's really cool. And I looked over there. I don't know if that's what did it, but I started to swerve and I swerved and then I went straight across the highway and through a barbed wire fence and into a field. And there I was in my, my, um, my four by four pickup truck in a field of snow and people were driving by looking at me and I was like, I'd just gone through a fence. And I was like, holy snikes. And um, you know, right before that, I, there was, I, even, I forgot, I don't even know why I noticed it. There's always traffic on that road. And um, it was gonna be a great snow day, I'm sure, up in the mountain for skiers. And I saw all, probably like 15 cars go by me heading up to the mountain. And I thought, man, that's a lot of cars. And, um, and then moments later, I did that and straight across the highway. And luckily, I was in between traffic. And so I didn't hit anybody and I didn't hit myself. And, um, and I sat there and I only had one bar on my cell phone. So I, um, I called Jen, I said, Jen, call 911 and let them know what happened. Um, I don't know, I don't think I should just take off, like hit and run or something. Um, but but you know, I had a client scheduled and I said, call her and let her know I'm gonna be late, um, internet, over the internet. And, um, and so I sat there and then finally some guy from across the street, things are about a quarter mile away, homes are like a quarter mile away out there or more. He walked over and he's like, yeah, my wife said she saw somebody go into the field. And um, so he told me wh whose land it was and where the house was, it was like a quarter mile away from us. and. Um, and so I said, well, I'll go leave a note over there and um, let him know what happened and I'll fix his fence. And we moved the barbed wire and, um, and I drove out and went over there and then talked to the guy that's the, that works at the next door neighbor's farm area. And, um, and he said, yeah, that guy um, is in a retirement home. And um, so there was a little pad at their door to leave notes and I left a note and I took off. And, um, and then Jen said that the, the police said, oh, you shouldn't have left, but, um, but go ahead and just fill out a report. And, so I was I'm doing all that and then I saw my client. And when I saw my client, it felt like it feels now, like a lot of what I call sacred space. So, you know, 
years ago, I, I was in the Sierra Nevadas, um, mountains of um, Northern California in spring, hiking in um, for 10 miles with a group that I knew some of the people a little bit, but not much. But we were hiking in for 10 miles and we were gonna hang out in the forest for a few days and then hike back. And I'm a big time runner, so I thought, I'm gonna keep running um, the next day and do a two hour run. An hour, I could see the map and there's a little meadow, and come back and, and do that. And I was running, I had no t-shirt, it was about 70 degrees, but at night it got into the 30s. Um, had my little belt on with a power bar back when I ate power bars and a, a, a little bit of water, and that was it. And on the way out, I was chomping through a little snow and then a nice trail and beautiful meadow. I made the turn, started to come back, and I realized I was chomping through some snow, but there, my footprints weren't there. And I'm like, holy shnikes, I think I'm lost. So I ran up to the top of this big hill mountain looking thing because we had camped by this giant red rock. And, um, and I looked around to see it, like, where is this thing? And it was just miles and miles and miles of green rolling mountains and hills. And I thought, holy cow. And so, um, so a two hour run, short version of the story is turned into a four hour run. And up until the last little bit, I didn't know if I was even going in the right direction. And I tell you, when I got back and um, that night at the campfire in 30 degrees and sitting out all bundled up, I was so grateful, of course, right? To be alive. Like I thought, God, I could have been like sleeping out there and this was before cell phones and all that kind of stuff was popular. Um, so it was like one of those kind of moments. And, um, and yesterday, I wasn't fired up when that happened, but I, was, um, I kept thinking about it, and it definitely felt very sacred, kind of like, you know, there's going to come a time when I'm not here. And of course, for all of us, right? And so um, it's not some sort of like um, just something far off in the future, it could be today. It could be tomorrow. Um, so, so for today, what I did for our session, and I've already done it, but I'll, I'll notice it right now with you again, I time traveled um, 14 and a half years into the future. So we could look back, you could look back, and notice all that you had accomplished. There you go. Now with matrix energetics, we can actually do this for real. And so you might notice 14 and a half years in the future, looking back what you would have accomplished, what you would have done, what had been really important to you, and all the action you took to make it happen. And who you would become by doing all that. Yeah, so there's gonna come a time, of course, when we're not here. And so while you're here, while we're here, what might it be like to live today <clears throat> like it might be your last day? Now, of course, if you're going to work, you might still go to work, right? But how might you do your work? And of course, you know, you have your plans and your actions and, your, and the stuff that you're going to do to get stuff done so that 14 and a half years from now, you've got something really cool that happened, a really cool adventure you were on. There's going to be action to do. And during that action, you might bump into some of your stuff, your internal game. Like, you know, if you're a salesman, you might bump into um, things about money. If you're um, a healer, you might bump into your own self-doubts about healing. If you're a mom or a dad, you might bump into some stuff related to family. And what's cool is there's a way to go right to the core of what that's really about 
and clear whatever that internal angst is so that you can do the next action. It's also really cool, of course, to do the action steps. Yeah, so for today's session, you might want to notice how today looks and feels to you. Yeah, what actions you're taking. And if there's any internal angst that comes up when you think of doing what you want to do, living where you want to live, um, accomplishing what you want to accomplish. And if you want the technique, the thing, the way that I, um, I personally use every single day to clear any of the inner game stuff, the stuff that's in the way, this, the inner stuff that comes up when you really push limits and, and, and make things happen for yourself, you know, in business, in love, in health, when you really get to do stuff and make things happen and you've got a plan, you're working it. There's stuff that comes up, even when you're on your, especially if you're on your path and purpose. And there's a way to go clear the inner angst that's in the way of you getting to the next step. And if you'd like to know what I use, it's, I've made two PDFs to talk about it and a whole hour plus session where you can um, dive deep into it and use it. So I've got it at ralphhavens.com forward slash enlighten up. www.ralphhavens.com forward slash enlighten up. And you can go grab it, try it if you like. And let me know how today's session is, what you notice that's different, how today feels, maybe there's some more appreciation going on, comment below, subscribe, and um, I will see you all tomorrow. You know, we're going down, I've got to get new tires. I figured out yesterday, it's like um, my tires are old. I bought them back in 2013. I think they're just old and um, slippery. So um, luckily, I was the one that took the swerve and was uh, okay, and, um, and everybody else, Jen, Ben, and Baden weren't in the car, and there was, we weren't in, hit anything anybody and so um so we'll see how the how the road looks today and if it's clear we'll um we'll go into town it's our family day and um and get new tires hopefully because um this weekend we're heading down to the state capitol to go oppose um hb house bill 1638 because um we don't want to be required to do medical procedures against our will for our family the vaccination bill that's in in the house right now so, um, so it's important to us, and, um, but it's supposed to snow and rain again, and um, it's a three-hour drive. So, um, so hopefully we get new tires today. All right, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye now.